Caddis Max was here this time with a uh, simple review of this Makita uh, SJS. This one happens to be a 9566 CV, but there's a variety of models of five and six inch grinders that are variable speed, soft start. And the SJS is they have a clutch in them. And in many tools, clutches unfortunately end up being a little bit uh, too soft and slip when you really don't want them to. And it seems on this Makita, if you're, some people have issues with running them hard uh, when you're using them with six inch wheels. I actually pulled, uh, this didn't have a guard I picked up used. Put a four and a half inch Makita guard I had on there. It didn't quite fit, I had to put a shim in there. And I think it's actually pretty well optimized of just have being a high power four and a half inch grinder. With the bigger wheels, people have had the, generally it works out pretty good, but sometimes the clutch will kick in and all it is is they spring a little, little uh, dog tooth thing and uh, I'll do a tear down in the future video. I may pull off the back cover in this one. But if you put too much force on, then the idea is it starts slipping rather than um, having the wheel really get stuck and then having it kick back on you because obviously dry grinders can uh, be dangerous. So it would be, in this circumstance, now I have it with a four and a half inch guard, it's a bit heavy and large, but I do like the idea of having a high torque grinder. And once again, in the teardown, any time they have a clutch system, there's a spring involved there, and if people don't like that, you can always uh, do something to shim up the spring, or usually you can. So it does have a dial just right on the back. Uh, I think some of the newest ones, it's actually lit and otherwise is a normal it is a side switch grinder this didn't happen to be one of the uh, paddle switch versions Tw 12 amps since it's designed as a six inch it's uh 9000 rpm and then they have a little rpm chart for the uh speeds down at the bottom really a lot of people in the grinder manufacturers you know they're for a normal four and a half inch it would have been 10,000 rpm and they start going 11,000 there's even some 12,000 which are really pushing it because a lot of wheels aren't designed for quite those speeds but uh you really don't always need all that speed when it comes to a grinder even when you're doing cutoff operations which tends to be the type of thing that you think you want to go as fast as possible if you go really fast and what I've actually been learning what I really wanted uh, was a variable speed grinder I have a, a variable AC transformer and I've used that a few times with grinders but it's much better when it's integrated into the unit um, many times if you go slower you'll actually experience uh, a lot more controllability and either uh, just about the same cut speed and sometimes faster cut speed and even better uh, finishes or less burning uh, just because these wheels are spinning so fast on those 11,000 rpm grinders that it's melting steel right into the wheel and then you're having to kind of push past that adds a lot of extra friction and uh, is even though you think you're doing better when you're going so fast many times you're actually not otherwise pretty straightforward grinder the switch has held up and I wanted to uh, kind of show let me do that one more time it is load compensating so that's what makes this particularly uh, useful is the fact that at the lower speeds as you load it up the controller automatically increases power to the motor to keep the wheel speed the same and then if you go to a lighter spot it prevents it from over speeding so it's really nice because it you are actually getting a specific speed and you can hear how it compensates when you go from a higher speed down to a lower speed let me do that one more time here So anyway, you can hear how it is down speeding and then detects it's getting a little too slow and then picks back up again. And it's pretty fast. And then the soft start just makes it a little bit safer. Anyway, I did a, let's cut off. This is a pretty thick grade eight bolt. I mean, this the head on this is a one and a 16th inch. It's I think a three quarter inch shank. I'm gonna go and uh, cut this off here. Let's go and look at that.
So I had that turned up about to a level three. Maybe this was four and a half inch wheel is only running at maybe 7,000 RPM or something like that. And uh, it actually worked pretty well. You know, you get that distinct burning smell. There's a whole lot less of that when I was doing this cutoff operation. You can see I had it relatively in control. And the finish is actually surprisingly good. And you wouldn't think about achieving a good finish. But the fact that the wheels moving seems to be a much more optimal speed, especially for whatever the cheap wheel is on this, that it really just went right through it. You could hear the grinder uh, compensated and slow down at all. And you can see on the surface of this, there is no blackening. I wasn't actually burning and melting the steel until I got right to the very thin end. So I was even a little bit more surprised, or I was surprised a little more than uh, I was expecting because you'd think it'd go a lot slower, but it seemed to go just as fast just with the reason being that you're not melting steel into the edge of the wheel, so you're always getting a really good bite. So I'm... Uh, Definitely pretty happy about that. And in my experience, Makita grinders have been pretty good. You know, a lot of in a lot of the reviews, people have problems, have had problems with pretty much all power tools. There's they're not perfect, that's for sure. But uh, in my experience, Makitas have always been uh, pretty decent. This really isn't too big to use as a uh, four and a half inch grinder and uh, they've always been pretty robust and uh, reliable. I am going to pop this open just because I want to see how the brush wear is doing and just so people can take a quick look at the electronics. Always pretty easy. Usually these grinders like this Makita is just one screw. Pull that screw off and the whole back cover slides apart because it's a one-piece body which is a little bit more robust. Pretty reasonable design back here. We do have a rubber boot and then this is actually a pretty heavy toggle switch so when you turn it on it just toggles the switch but see, it's not spring-loaded. When this side switch returns is what's actually turning it off. Grinders do work their cords hard. I'm glad Makita has upgraded this. Just a couple screw terminals, one on each side, and then your strain relief. So super-duper simple to replace the power cord on this. And then here's our brushes. Let's get a little uh, closer. Well, that should be close enough. These things are just about brand new. They do have a copper wire going to them for more direct contact. Many tools will just rely on the uh, contact of the brush being inside the, the brass guide, and that is a pretty decent guide. Clock springs are very reliable. They apply a constant amount of tension all the way through. The nice thing about it having a side wire is it's in this slot, so when the brushes get all the way to the bottom of the slot, the wire will catch on the, this little lip on the bottom so that the brushes won't dance around it and really destroy the commutator. So it's nice to see that this grinder doesn't have much use on it, but it has a little bit, but of course, or I should say that they did put on some really uh, large brushes. If we do look in the, through the side there, we can see that the commutator does look pretty decent. That's not bad at all. Since it's so easy to check on these many used grinders, it's really obvious how many hours they have on them just because of how deeply worn down the commutator is. This is just starting to get discolored, but there you can't feel any kind of a lip. So anyway, oop, I forgot to mention. So here's the variable speed controller. So the wires is literally come in, go through the switch, go into the one side of the controller, out of the controller, into these other wires. And it's something to make note of. Pretty much, uh, not just this particular Makita grinder, all sorts of power tools that have the ability to vary their speed, whether it's drills with variable speed triggers or dials on jigsaws. Many times when you run those tools hard to the lower speeds, there's just not enough airflow and it ends up burning up the variable speed components. But the tool is still good. It's very, you have to practically start a fire to really burn up one of the motors. So in this situation, if you ever had one of these grinders and it just failed, it's probably gonna be this. And all you have to do is get in there and just use a multimeter to make sure that there's, it still shows that the motor still exists. And you just link these two wires together and bypass the controller and you just have a normal single speed grinder. Really compact. You can see how the whole switch housing and the variable speed uh, controller both slide onto these dovetails. So there you have it. Kind of a, a rambling review. And this one was made in 2007. So uh, this grinder is already 13 years old. Once again, not a ton of hours, but it's kicked around and still is working great. And Makita grinders are generally pretty good. And when you have one of these that's load sensing with the variable speed, 
A lot of people have used a lot of grinders. What's surprising is variable speed and a decent load sensing one. One of those things where you, eh, it's not such a big deal. And then when you get a grinder and you just have the ability to adjust the speed and start doing various operations at various speeds, whether you're sanding or wire brushing, cut off operations and different materials, whether they're hardened steels, mild steels, stainless steels, you know, those types of things, uh, you find that, wow, you know, you get uh, the job done more quickly and more safely and more effectively. It's surprising to be uh, just because you're like, oh, I can just adjust the speed. It also makes it useful into low speeds as uh, with the sanding disc. Many times you put those sanding flap discs and they just get burned up. They're burning up anything and, and just getting clogged super fast because they're moving so fast on those 11,000 RPM grinders. And, you know, on this, you can knock it down to 4,000 RPM and those flap this actually will last a bit. You know, you'll get more material removed uh, for the total life of the flap this just because it isn't just screaming along. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.